what's going on with it you know what time it is another edition of you know what it is man before i get into it make sure you like subscribe hit that notification bell do all the rest blah 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 so you know every time the videos drop without further ado we're gonna get into it nfl championship sunday eagles 49ers i'll give a little prediction for the Bengals and the Chiefs after this but man you know what it is yo philly stand up we're gonna go through the matchup see who's who's better than who at each part and who's gonna win this game man so let's get get into it without any further ado uh keys to victory right now first things first you gotta stop the run this team with the 49ers is built through their run game man kyle shanahan he did it every stop of the way especially in atlanta and he's doing it again with the 49ers and you look at this 49ers offense and we're going to compare it to the Eagles offense six in points per game for the Niners compared to third for the Eagles uh 12th in passing yards per game compared to ninth for the Eagles eighth in rushing yards per game but let's let's be real eighth. that's a deceiving stat there versus fifth uh for the Eagles and then third down conversion right about the same 46 for the Eagles and then 45 percent for the 49ers so this offense they on time they on schedule when it's time for the training league station they're right on time and they come out in a lot of very unique uh pass sets and run sets a lot of motion a lot of smoke and mirrors which is typical Kyle Shanahan but one thing that they've done since they picked up Christian McCaffrey is they come out in not a lot of 12 personnel but a lot of 21 personnel which is two running backs one tight end so to bring out uh, Khrushchev or Elijah Mitchell along with Christian McCaffrey and then have Debo Samuel split outside and then you can motion Debo Samuel Samuels across the field or into the backfield. They got so many different <clears throat> uh, permutations that they can do to each formation. It's really what makes them. It's their bread and butter. So you have to look at this, this game and see how you're going to stop them on the ground. They're building a nice... A cohesive unit around Brock Purdy and making it very easy for him with a solid run game and very easy reads off of play action. So th this Eagles defense gave up a lot of yards per game uh, over this year in, in the rushing game. But when you look at this stat, 121.6 yards per game, which is tied for 16th now, a lot of those big games came earlier in the season, especially leading up to that Commanders game where they ran all over and that caused us to get Ndamukong Sue and then Linval Joseph out of free agency. And then we plugged up a lot of that, that water that was leaking out of the ship through the run game on defense. So that, that stat's a little bit misleading. They've been much better in the recent, uh, I would say, second half of the season versus the first half. So the Eagles, solid in the passing game, but they're going to have to come up and really be... Um, creative in stopping the run really be disciplined stay in your gaps gap discipline gap discipline gap discipline stay in your gaps do your job okay and then you look at the, the um the tail to tape for these teams right here and look flat out this is from uh pff uh pro football focus uh overall team score look at the eagles and the 49ers and then the chiefs those are the top three teams in terms of overall pff grade the, the Eagles being slightly better than the 49ers, but they're, they're, it's tomato-tomato. Same difference. In terms of offensive efficiency, they're right there neck and neck. Passion efficiency, we're better in the pass game. Pass blocking, we are a better pass blocking team. Look at Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Mylotta, Landon Dickerson. Them boys up front are really good in the passing game. Jalen Hurts always has a lot of time to throw the ball. And then receiving-wise, um, we are very good, but... The 49ers are better, I think, partially because of all the different ways that they use Debo Samuels and Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield, flanking them out wide, putting them in a the slot, getting them these easy one-on-one -on -one matchups. So that's really where their receiving game thrives. And then you have to respect them one-on-one -on -one because you have to, at times, double George Kittle. So it really gives them those one-on-one -on -one matchups that are favorable to them. Then the run game on offense... We know, we know what they are, right? But we are very efficient in that run game because of Jalen Hurts, because he gives you different responsibilities versus a typical team you're going to face. Always have to worry about the RPO and then the read option. And if you don't respect him, he'll gash you for 15 yards, 20 yards, 7 yards. It adds up over the course of a game, and it throws you off schedule as a defense. Run blocking. 
we have a better grade than the 49ers. Um, okay. So defensively, that's where you kind of see the differences. We are not great against the one. We're solid against the run, but not great. 49ers, best in football, hands down. Bosa, Wagner, and that group, they up front. They doing their thing. Um, however, I think that where you'll see the difference, in my opinion, is Jalen Hurts versus Brock Purdy. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, in my opinion, to stop Hurts in that run game because of that added dimension he brings with his legs. And we saw that bear out in the Bears game, no pun intended, but that was on the messy field. That was in the mud. Okay. However, that also happened to them against Marcus Mariota when he was the starter of the Falcons in the not too distant past here this year. And he gashed him on the ground. He had a run, running touchdown and a passing touchdown. He, he ran very well on the ground. So you have to think that Sirianni and Steichen are in the film room looking at tape on that Falcons game and that Bears game and seeing, okay, what do we do? Well, that is similar to what they did to hurt the 49ers, which is pretty much everything. So I, I think that will be the difference. Both, will, both, both teams will be able to run well. I just think the Eagles will be, they'll bring a different dimension. Okay, and then that's going to lead me into my next point here, which is coming into the pass game and winning on third down. Are you able to get yourself in a favorable third down situations? What the Eagles do very well is they'll give up yards on the, on the ground at times, but for the most part, they'll stop you to a three yard gain, two yard gain, get you in a second and seven. All right, and then. If, if you don't convert on second and seven and make it a third and three, third and two, then you're in trouble against this Philly defense because we're the best pass defense in football, hands down, with the best pass rush, hands down. Historic pass rush, actually. All right, so now you look at the tail of the tape and these two defensive lines. You look at Nick Bosa on the b- bottom of the screen, 89.2 true pass rush rating according to PFF, and then the rest of the guys, they're solid, but nothing's really standing out in terms of how much pressure they're getting on each and every snap. Then you look up at the top chart, and you look at the Eagles, Javon Hargraves, 91.5, Hassan Reddick, one of the best pass rushers in football, alongside Nick Bosa at a 91.4 rating, and then Brandon Graham, 90.8 rating, coming off the Achilles injury last year, only to come up and put up 11 sacks. You know, n- nothing crazy. It says 12 here, but I think he has 11. And then Josh Sweat, he got uh, 10 or 11 sacks. He has an 84.2 rating. So you got four guys, bam, 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 that can all rush the passer. And let's not forget Fletcher Cox, who in a down year has still has eight sacks because he's getting a lot of one-on-one, seven or eight sacks. All right. And we have a high rate of pressure on the quarterback. It's not just the sacks. We're getting to the quarterback even when we don't get home. That's why this defense has been so good. And then on top of that, we'll go down to the next screen. Our secondary is another layer of security. Darius Slay, James Bradbury, two of the best, better, uh, probably the best duel in football. Look at the passer rating that they're allowing. Darius Slay, 76.2 passer rating. Really good. Bradbury, a 48.4 Pass rating, playoffs and regular season included, phenomenal. I think he might be the best in football with that that rating allowed to quarterbacks. And then you look at Zach McPherson, who's a backup, backup to the backup, right? Giving up a 71.5% uh, QB rating. Overall, he's he's just a guy, but when he's on the field, he makes plays. Uh, Avante Maddox giving him a 92.5 pass rating in the slot. But overall, he's he's pretty consistent. And we've missed him the past couple of weeks. And he's actually, at, le- at least according to the reports, coming back healthy, which is a huge thing. And then you look at the San Francisco grades. These guys, they are very good secondary, okay? Both the Eagles and, and the 49ers are only giving up like an 82 or 83 quarterback rating overall as a team defense, respectively. However... The 49ers, they play a lot of zone, but when you get them into man coverage, they're liabilities. We saw this with Javarius Ward last week and his cohorts versus DK Metcalf. They had a lot of issues covering those wide receivers Uh, last week or whatever week. They had a lot of issues covering those wide receivers one-on-one, all right? And and that's, that's going to be an issue against the 
Devonta Smith and AJ Brown, who are man, they're a top duo in the NFL, along with those boys for the Bengals. Okay, like you can put them in the same category. So getting those one-on-one matchups is going to be key. And if they're going to play a lot of zone, then that's when you bring in the RPOs and then you bring in the zone run concepts and you really try to make them pay. You have to make them choose what they're going to do. They're going to have to get exotic and very um, intricate with it. And I think D'Amico Ryans, former Eagle, uh, Eagle, salute to you. He's no fool. He's no idiot. A phenomenal linebacker when he played in his own right. He's a very good defensive coordinator. I think he, know, he knows this. If I know this. He definitely knows this. And they'll be prepared for this. It's just going to be... Even if you're prepared, can you do anything with the knowledge you have? And I'm not so sure that the 49ers can on the back end. Up front, monsters. On the back end, that's where we're looking to attack. Get these one-on-one matchups in man coverage. Try to get some cover one. Maybe at times we might get cover zero and then be able to exploit those matchups one-on-one. All right? And then lastly, you have to look at getting after Brock Purdy. Don't let him look. Uh, comfortable back there in the pocket make him think make him move get him off his spot make him flustered okay you look at what he's been able to do down the stretch it's been nothing short of miraculous especially as a rookie quarterback however we saw in some of the games this year and especially the Cowboys game last week he is not the same guy under pressure as many quarterbacks are not you look at the Eagles in their pressure rate, they're second in the NFL in pressure rate, only after the Cowboys. However, we were better finishing on those plays. Cowboys get pressure, but they don't finish. Eagles get pressure, we get sacks, a la 70 plus for the year, and the postseason included. So we led the league in a 12.6% sack rate. On 12 and a half percent of the snaps, we're getting a sack, which is high. It's almost 3% higher than any other team. And we finish better than the Cowboys in interception rate. So we're getting sacks, getting pressure. And then when you do get the ball off, you are throwing into a minefield of high caliber defensive backs. Oh, let's not forget CJ Garter Johnson, who can switch flip flop from safety or the slot. So you have a lot to deal with. So in that divisional round against the Cowboys, Purdy, clean pocket, 15 for 17, throwing dots. Buck 59, but when he was under pressure, he was only 4 for 12, which is not good for those who are not good with statistics, right? It's not good. According to Warren Sharp, um, Philadelphia deployed the second highest rates of quarters coverage, which means you have the two cornerbacks drop into deep zones, and you have your two safeties drop into deep zones. Um, each player is covering a quarter of the field, a la quarters coverage. And on 15 uh, dropbacks against quarters this year, Purdy has only completed 33% of his passes, 5 for 15 for 4.9 yards per attempt. And 10 of those pass attempts were against the Cowboys in last week's win, but you can see how much trouble he had in that game. Okay, he didn't kill them, he kept them afloat, but they were never really able to break any big plays open. And I see that getting a little bit tougher for them against an Eagles defense, which has a lot of ball hawks on top of getting pressure on the quarterback. All right. So all in all, I think this is going to be a very, very, uh, this is a very good matchup. I think it's going to be a very good game. However, I think the Eagles, I give them the slight edge. They're two and a half favorites in this game at home. And I, I see the Eagles winning by three to five points. I think it's going to be uh, a, a very, very good chess match. You have two very high-level coaches on each side of the field who bring their own kind of twist and, and, and flavor to their offensive attacks. And I think the Eagles are going to have a little bit more uh, better time matching up against their offense with our defense versus their defense against our offense. Because um, in that passing game, A.J. Brown, he's about due, bro. He's about due. And, you know, look, they, they, there are no slouches in their passing game, but... You got Slay and Bradbury and CJ Gardner Johnson, and then Maddox coming back. It's going to be a tough task for them. So I got the Eagles winning this in a very hard fought game, and I got us going to the Super Bowl to see, in my opinion, the Bengals. So we'll see how it plans out. Uh, uh, leave a like, and uh, I'll catch y'all after the games. Enjoy it, and go birds, man. Fly equals fly. Peace.